ship! Let's Please take it! Yes! Yes! Hello and welcome to the Thresher Football Show. I'm Dan Page alongside head football coach of the Threshers, A.B. Stokes. Bethel College up to 3-1 and one now with a road victory at Avila University, 42-26. to 26. The Threshers get it done against the Eagles, and it was a 35-6 to 6 ball game at halftime. We had a, another weather delay. <laughs> Can't have a season without a weather delay, Coach. Well, hopefully that's the, the one. <laughs> hey, Let's get but, out the way. but you know... You know, advantage Threshers in this Adva situation. Advantage Threshers. The last three Always. years. So Always. there you go. So the Threshers get the victory 42 to 26 to defeat the Eagles and get back on track after dropping the week before the game at home against Ottawa 28 to 24. And now they get set to take on the Kansas Wesleyan Coyotes, who we'll talk about later in the program here on the Thresher Football Show. So let's break down the game against Avila. Um, in the first quarter, only one score. It was on the opening drive for you. You guys had a great play to set up. A couple plays later, K.J. Christensen touchdown. Mm -hmm. As Caden ran it in for him two yards out. And on a drive that was seven plays for 70 yards and three minutes of game clock. But it was the screen pass to mm -hmm. Trayvon Madison that really got you going. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it was only a three-minute drive? That was only a three-minute drive? Only a three-minute drive, according to this. Oh, wow. It seemed like <laughs> it seemed like it was longer than that. It seemed like I looked yeah. after the score, and it was only like seven or six minutes left on the clock. Uh, but they had the ball first, so I don't yes. know how long they had it to start the game. So. Yeah, you guys got a nice stop to start there, and then they punted it to you. And the Threshers go up seven to nothing in that scenario. And then in the second quarter, uh, a punting situation for your team as Jackson Walker punts the football inside the 20, mind you. Mm -hmm. And uh, he now has nine punts inside the 20 on the season, uh, which is tied for third nationally okay. um, right now. But the result of that play was a muffed punt from the Avalo returner, and James Goff hustled down and recovered it, and they marked him at the one. Uh, it's debatable whether he was in or not. I, I mean, I, I keep looking at the footage, and I'm like, well, it could be either way. <laughs> but, you know, a play or two later, DJ Sears punched it in from one yard out to put the Threshers up two scores. Then Avila finally got on the board with a touchdown pass. Uh, their PAT failed. They had some PAT issues uh, during the game against mm -hmm. you guys. Also in the second quarter, you guys marched down again. DJ ran it in from 14 yards out this time. And it was kind of funny because I was hearing the Avila sideline based on where I am. They're like, the quarterback is going to run it. <laughs> 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 and, you know, even with that being said, you guys were able to execute the play and go up 21-6 to and then add more to it as uh, not too long after that, less than a minute of game clock later, you guys find Tucker Smith on a 40-yard touchdown pass. And then, uh, yet again, just before half, a 25-yard touchdown pass to Trayvon Madison mm -hmm. to go up 35-6 to at halftime. And one of the most productive first halves this program has seen, um, you know, it has to be up there mm -hmm. because that guy's put you – that first half puts you on pace for a lot. Yeah, yeah, it did. But, you know, um, we don't even look at it like that. We just want to play good football. Right. Like, you just want to play good – football consistently throughout a throughout a football game and limit it limit as many mistakes uh, as we can and the first half we were fortunate enough to do just that and it's not just playing good football and just necessarily taking care of the football when you have it but creating turnovers I thought we did a good job of that mm -hmm. in the first half as well uh, and then part in the second but in the first half, for sure, but not just creating turnovers, but then the offense is coming and capitalizing on those turnovers. And then you even throw special teams in there with yeah. you know, a good punt. He muffs it. Our guys are hustling down uh, to 
you know to jump on it and so it was a it was a, a really really good first half of of football and we were fortunate that it was uh you know that was kind of put us over the edge to to come out with the win definitely set the tone for things and uh um, mentioned that halftime delay due to the weather but nobody scores in the third quarter of this game uh both teams get out and you i know you guys were trying to manage the game there in the second half a little bit yeah but you know um going back and looking at the film we were in what we call the red or green zone uh three times um two of them we got uh pushed back from penalties uh holding penalties uh which was was kind of weird getting caught because we, we had three holding penalties pretty much not in a row but those were the three flags like it's three mm -hmm. flags in a row we get the flag report and i went over it with our team um this sunday when we met we get the flag report and there in the third quarter there were three holding penalties on us in a row and it's just you know it's it, i call it strange because you know our guys play the, our offensive line is probably the most consistent unit of that we have uh, on our football team mm -hmm. and uh to get those flags man it, it just seems like maybe something happened at halftime that we were unaware of uh, as far as you know maybe someone said something to officials or they had a meeting or something and and then all of a sudden you know we get that but i tell our guys i say you have to understand you know if a flag gets thrown on something you have to be quick to analyze like okay what mm -hmm. what did i do here you know what i mean and if it's whatever the case may be but if it happens again then you definitely know you should know and say all right i i can't block like that or whatever the case may be sure so we talk with our guys about that but we had three holding penalties um that that took us out of scoring position mm -hmm. and 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 it's hard to to play from behind the sticks you know what I mean? And when you're used mm -hmm. to, you know, second and six or four, third and two, and then all of a sudden you, you're back at first and 20 or second and 18, mm -hmm. and now it kind of shrinks the playbook as far as what you want to do. It's early in the season. We don't want to throw out, bring out the best, you know, second, third, and long plays right now all, you know, every game. Like, we, right. have, to, we have the screen. Okay, that's enough, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then we had a, a turnover in the red zone as well. When we yeah. were marching it down and mm -hmm. we were running the ball well and and it wasn't even a a, a bad turnover like i mean it was, I, there's no such thing as a good turnover right but when i say a bad turnover it wasn't like a negative play mm -hmm. it, it there was positive yards picked up i think it was like an eight or nine yard run yeah and his knee was guy. down and, yeah and, and another you know what i mean that's <laughs> i was gonna say that too and arguably it could have been down but you know we talked to our ball carriers um and and all we say is you know if you hand the ball to the official they'll never mistake it so right um the, so i feel like when, when we talk about the second half like some people may look and say oh well you know you were shut out or oh you guys didn't weren't as productive in the second half well by way of uh i'm trying to think of of the word that i'm, I'm looking for it it's just this like so we're up Mm -hmm. We become a little bit more conservative, so it's not going to be these expos explosive plays where you're scoring in one score drives unless you're just breaking a long run or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still feel like we have productivity and we moved the ball well uh, in the second half and we ate up clock and, and we did some good things. We just, there was, you know, the turnovers and the three penalties that kind of stalled out some drives that could have been. Uh, potential scoring drives and, and what we're working on this week a theme of the week is complete right we want to play this this whole game this complete game we want to play to our you know um, to our full capability of, of our, our full potential of, of who we are as a, as a program and uh, and I think Saturday just gave us an opportunity to make that a goal yeah definitely did uh, just observation you know the the Eagle sideline was asking for that hold in the first quarter, and then all of a sudden in the third quarter you see it. So just a, a matter of uh, convenience on the observation. Um, but to start the fourth quarter, Abla does score on a Eli Williams rushing touchdown, and then um, you guys stall out the next drive, and then they have the football. And so, so a play that I don't think you could ever duplicate 
probably ever happened. Um, you know, no. Williams goes back to pass and throws to his receiver, hits the receiver in the hands, and then it cr- like crawls over his back yes. and it pops up. And then Cade Miller grabs it and it, it takes off. Like he takes it off his back. Almost. It really like, did. <laughs> I mean, I slowed it down and I yeah. zoomed in and everything. Yeah. And uh, I, I was like, wow. Like yeah. you, It couldn't it, be this high <laughs> off his back. It had to be about what, about a half a foot. Yeah, something like that. But yeah. you know, after the fact, now that I've had a chance to think about it, I'm like, you should be grateful the officials didn't blow it dead. Yeah. In that scenario. Yeah. They did a good job. They of did. Yeah, they did. Letting the bull, you know, watching where the ball is it going to hit the ground? Is it going to hit the ground? No. Right. Okay. Yep. And uh, other than one official getting in the way of the return a little yeah. bit, but that happens. Yeah. Um, you know, Cade had a great return and got out of one tackle and then. Ended up in the end zone, of all things, for a second pick six of the season. Yeah. And uh, a definitely unusual one Absolutely. at that. But, uh, uh, you know, it couldn't happen to a better guy in that situation. No, and that's K- and by the way, he was defensive KCAC Defensive Player of the Week. Yes. You know, uh, rightfully so. He, I thought he played a phenomenal game. And, uh, man, he's just a – Kate is just a – you know, he – he is definitely a thresher through and through, man, and 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 he he's gonna battle week in and week out. He's gonna give you everything he got, and I'm glad that you know he's finding uh, success, and you know he's 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 having newfound success. Like mm-hmm. he never had a a pick six or I don't think a touchdown in college. Yeah. Now he's got two. That's <laughs> I mean that that. I tell you what, that's something I, I know when he's sitting around, you know, with, with his buddies when he's older or his kids, if he if he has them, that's something he's going to definitely be talking about. So. Yeah, and yeah, that's what's great is, uh, you, you know, he'll have evidence of it as well. And that's oh, what yeah. that's great about the, the game today is you have access to all that stuff. Yes. And, yes. Uh, yeah, no, dash, no doubt uh, the and decision to come back for a fifth year was the correct one. <laughs> yeah. And the, the extra footage from you too. That's, oh, that's yeah. That's pretty cool, man. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of nice to be there there and get something right every once in a while (laughs) sometimes uh i ended up being in the right spot i'm like man i plan that pretty well i did not plan it (laughs) there uh abel adds a couple more scores but the damage seemed to be already done as the threshers went at 42 to 26 over the eagles in kansas city uh kind of getting a kind of avenging last year's loss at abela uh so to speak in the ball game, DJ Sears went eight of nine passing. How about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. For 141 yards and two touchdowns, only got sacked once, didn't throw any interceptions. Oh. He also rushed the ball for two touchdowns and 107 yards on 20 carries. So again, another balanced effort from him and, and giving his all through and through every yeah. single play. Yeah, for sure. You know, same thing with K. DJ. We got a lot of guys who are just. You know they they're gonna battle, man. They're gonna they're gonna give a supernatural amount of effort, you know, week in and week out, you know, and then uh, rely on the grace of God, man, to get us through this thing. <laughs> but we, uh, you know, it, it's something we, those guys, you just can't. It you you see it on Saturdays, and some people uh, who don't know the work that they put in, you know, yeah. may may just think that all oh, these guys are just talented or whatever the case may be, but. Man, guys like DJ K, uh, Tuck, KJ, Scott Grider, the offensive line, the D line, these guys, man, they work really, really hard. They put a lot of um, of effort into training and practicing and lifting, and and uh, it's just, you know, I'm glad that uh, you know there are weeks that they get to experience a, a good amount of success. Definitely, and it's always challenging uh, at the quarterback position, <laughs> being a critical thinker every second of the game and yeah. putting your body on the line so many times yes. uh, week after week, of course, in uh, the football season. Uh, other ball carriers, Caden Christensen had a touchdown on 84 yards and 16 carries. Blake Brewer had seven carries for about 40 yards. Yeah. And uh, you guys got a little active with the slots in the running game as well. Uh, receiving, Trayvon Madison had three catches for 67 yards and a touchdown. Tucker Smith, three catches for 61 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Jacob Reyes, a catch for 12 yards. And Devont- uh, 
they gave Devontae Pickard a, a catch. It was actually Jaden Cartwright okay, had a yeah. catch on that. The, the double numbers still throws off people sometimes yeah, at the college yeah, ranks, yeah. interesting yeah. enough. Uh, for the defensive side of the football, Tate Seabolt leads you in tackling with eight. Cade Miller with seven and an interception plus a pass breakup. Doug Ryder was a monster. Yes. Uh, five tackles, two for loss. Um, you know, Jairo Castillo with the sack. Colton McCarty with the sack. Yeah. Um, I think Mitchell Monteith Mitchell. almost had one. Oh, they didn't it, w- it was across the line of scrimmage. Oh, okay, so, okay, okay. So it appears because that's what we're looking at right here on the stat sheet. But it is a tackle for loss. And nonetheless, I mean, getting your guys in that rotate in on the defensive line, yeah. that activity is so important to your yeah. team. Yeah. Um, interception wise, I mean, you guys had what? How many in the game? Two between Cade and uh, Garrett Slater with. Yeah. Good returns as well. Yeah. And then you had a fumble recovery return. Two. Two fumble recoveries. Two fumble recoveries. Yeah, one of them came. They caught the football, and they were down the field, and they stripped it. And then you guys had an opportunity to run it back a little bit. Yeah. And then I think you guys fumbled it right back to them uh, a play or so later Maybe. in that scenario. Because I remember thinking a turnover for a turnover. Oh, yeah. No, they, they we fumbled it. Did they did they score on their fumble, though? Because they I, got a fumble. They, I, I they think they might have. They and, and ran it back. They stripped I can't the remember. Backs, so ran it back. Yeah. yeah. It could have happened. A lot a lot happened. A lot has happened since Saturday. Yeah. It, it's kind of crazy. Um, let's see here. Jackson Walker had a 54-yard punt, three punts inside the 20. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carson Sauceda, he's actually up there in the top five or ten in points. Okay. Um, you know, he has 30 on the season. Okay. Um, and for kicking, uh, doing pretty well um, in his sophomore season. So, uh you know, always a humble guy to talk to there yeah. on the sidelines Carson is and uh, we have some good conversations but nonetheless he went six for six on PATs and did a good job with three touchbacks in the kicking game as well as the Threshers won it 42 to 26 any final thoughts on the game coach no I mean I think uh you know uh Avila man they're definitely a well coach and they're gonna you know, I, I know this, man. They, they're kind of like, like us, and I think a lot of teams in the conference just trying to trying to put it all together at once and play a complete mm-hmm. game, you know. And I know, uh, man, this is a competitive conference. It's crazy to see, you know, uh, the scores week in and week out. And, you know, uh, like you, I think you, you said it, like we're just beating each other up a little bit, you know what I mean? Yeah, everybody's going like, to get a loss, it seems like. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's just it's, it's crazy, man, but – uh, much respect to, to them and their coaching staff. Got to meet uh, Coach Alexander. Uh, it's Derek, right? Derek Alexander. Yeah, former Chiefs linebacker. Yeah, got to linebacker. meet him. Got to meet him. Um, that was that was pretty. Uh, it was a it was it was cool, man. Great guy, man. I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna probably you know get together in the in the off season uh, mm-hmm. just on you know just coaching stuff, you know. So it's uh it was that, that was just a cool it, it was just it was cool then we got to go up and stay overnight you know our guys mm-hmm. and they that that's why we fundraise so if you want to give to Bethel College you know <laughs> <laughs> please do because it helps us you know give our kids uh, uh, an experience like that uh, not having to wake up at, at five in the morning and you know drive three and three plus hours on the bus and play a game and come right back so I'm grateful to everybody who who helps and gives. Uh, to, to Bethel College and uh, you know make make that experience possible. Certainly, you guys uh, you know win at forty two to twenty six or some good games in the conference. Uh, you know it's just you you said something to me and I think you're dead on with it. You said uh, it doesn't matter what the final scores are anymore. It it's doesn't. just who won. No. Because I mean, when you have games like Evangel in St. Mary, fifty-nine to forty-two, that is no way indicative of how good of a team Evangel is uh, for winning that football game. Now, St. Mary, you know, that's pretty something for them to to really perk up about putting up forty-two points against a defense that only given up two touchdowns on the season yeah, at the yeah, time. Yeah, it was crazy. That was that's it. it was crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> you just don't know what's going to happen in this conference week yeah, after sure, week. There's always a surprise yeah. um you know a game in salinas kansas wesleyan wins at 35 to 28 they were kind of you know playing keep away with the friends falcons a little bit um 
you know, went up as many as two scores, but friends just kept fighting back and made it within one score yep. and kept cutting back within one score. And, you know, they end up, you know, the, you run out of time in the game, and yep. <laughs> that's what happened. As the Coyotes win it 35-28, to 28, friends gets their first loss of the season. And Kansas Wesley, and, you know, a, they're 2-2. Two and two. I mean, a two-loss team that beat, you know, a 3-1 and one team now. You know, anything can happen in this conference. It's uh, it's pretty exciting to watch it every week. Yep. Another uh, cross-divisional game, Southwestern at Tabor, as the Mound Builders win it 20-10. to 10, And mm -hmm. it was kind of a closer game than some people might have anticipated. But others, you know, it's Tabor is yeah, a, a well-coached team. Tabor was up 10-7 at half, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I, I heard that I was watching some games as we were driving back from Avila because, uh, you know, we played a uh, 1 o'clock kickoff. Yes. So most other teams were in the evening. And I was listening to – I think I was watching Sterling Bethany. And they were they were doing the scores on there. And they were saying, saying uh, uh, Tabor was up 10-7. Mm -hmm. But like I told you, man, it, it, like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It yeah. doesn't say anything about a pro because any given week, man, these teams, any teams, I'm talking, any any of the KCAC teams, man, can can beat any of the others. And I truly feel like that. That's how we coach our guys. Like, look, you just got to be ready. Like, don't don't buy into uh, what a score may be, what a record may be. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, you can you can kind of say not say we're a victim of it, but. You know, going into Ottawa, I'm sure we were probably the favorite. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And look at look at what happened. So throw all that stuff out the window. Focus on getting better. Focus on knowing your assignment. Focus on the things that you can control. And let's go play some football. Yeah, and compared to years in the past where you just had one team that might have run away with the conference, you know, I think that's kind of definitely transitioned to go by the wayside um, as it is now in the KCAC. You mentioned Sterling. They win 27-20 to at home against Bethany. McPherson beats Ottawa 60-17. to and as we mentioned, Evangel winning 59-42 to in Leavenworth, uh, making the long trip from uh, – uh, Springfield. Springfield. Yep. I wanted I wanted to say Nixa, but they're not actually from Nixa. They just play it in Nixa right, right. for their home games. So that sets up an interesting week ahead for week or game five, I should say. I'm just going to say games now because that's that's the way it works. Um, you get too yeah. confused. But uh, the Threshers taking on the Kansas Wesleyan Coyotes at six o'clock from Thresher Stadium. You can watch it on the KCAC network. We'll have coverage. And I'll be on the call for that one. And it should be another exciting contest between Kansas Wesleyan and Bethel. We'll tell you more about the Coyotes coming up here in the second half of the program. We'll, we'll take a time out at this point. You're watching the Thresher Football Show. Thresher fans, get ready for the upcoming school year by becoming a member of the Bethel Booster Club. Your membership impacts all athletic programs by paying for experiences last year, such as the Threshbees Award Show, postseason experiences and postseason tickets, the Hall of Fame Banquet, enhanced live streaming equipment, new banners in Thresher Gym, equipment for the Gearing Hall weight room, windscreens at Ward Tennis Center, and Thresher Stadium. Be a part of Thresher Athletics history and a booster club that is living out the Bethel College athletics mission by creating life-changing experiences for our student-athletes through four levels of membership plus parent and young alumni specials. Athletics is an integral part of the Bethel College experience and thanks to your support we look forward to growing our success for the future. Visit BethelThreshers.com slash Booster Club to become a member today. Welcome back to the Thresher Football Show. Dan Page alongside head football coach of Bethel College, A.B. Stokes. Bethel College 3-1 and one, as they get set to take on the Kansas Wesleyan Coyotes, who are 2-2, two and two, if I'm not mistaken, on the season, coming off a 35-28 to 28 victory at home against Friends University. As the Coyotes come in, a program that Bethel last year beat for the first time in 14 years, but it's been... 15 years since Bethel has beaten them at home. Interesting fact to that. 2008 was the last time Bethel beat them in North Newton. Coach, I, I, you know you're aware of the history with it, but just reminding folks, mm -hmm. um, before last season, the two years before that, Kansas Wesleyan came here to North Newton and won 
both times. And I can tell you, based on some of the interviews I've heard with Kansas Wesleyan players, those are some of the highlights of their careers playing for Kansas Wesleyan is coming into here and winning against you guys. Um, you may not have been here for both of those years, but still, nonetheless, that was a marquee win for them in their eyes. But uh, one of them uh, gave the program a loss and arguably kept kept Bethel out of the playoffs. And the one before that was the last game of the regular season and Bethel had already wrapped up the conference championship at that point in that weird kind of spring 2021 uh, vibe of that season. So just a little history on the matchup there. Uh, so, uh, Kansas Wesleyan with coming off a win against Friends. And uh, they opened the season against Evangel. And help me out in between there, Coach. Uh, Evangel, and then they played uh, Bethany. Bethany. And then Southwestern. Bethany and Southwestern, that's right. Yeah, and so uh, in that first game, uh, Richard Laura started at quarterback. He is scheduled to start against the Threshers. Um, and then he got hurt, and he missed the Bethany game. And they started Dayton Taylor, who was a, a really good running quarterback for them. Yep. And uh, he had a good, really, really good day against the Swedes. And um, and then, you know, and they get the victory. Um uh, again, actually, they lost to Southwestern. Uh, I can't remember. I think that was in Winfield, yeah, uh, in that football game. And then come in, in with a win against Friends. And they're excited to play at Bethel this week for the football game. Like it's 6 o'clock from Thresher Stadium. You can watch it on the KCAC network. All right, so kind of looking at some of the things for Kansas Wesleyan uh, on the season, averaging 153 yards uh, on the ground, 87 through the air, uh, 19 points per game. Kind of a little bit low for, you know, a Kansas Wesleyan team, but no doubt they have plenty of talent on their offense. Uh, their defense has given up 164 yards per contest, and that is rushing and passing 141 and giving up 18 points per contest. Um, coming into this week's game and uh, you know they've played some, some tough teams they've already faced Evangel they've already played Southwestern they've already faced friends um, you know they had a, a, you know a simple game against Bethany and now you know they they you could argue that they are prepared for you guys because they've played a pretty tough schedule so far yeah I mean even if they hadn't played what seemed to be a tough schedule I would I wouldn't say that they wouldn't be prepared oh yeah I mean? well <laughs> like, no no question I, I know what you mean but i'm just like you know uh battle tested um mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that yeah yeah I, I definitely you know uh i, th I know that they're ready to, to play but it, it, it it's kansas wesleyan versus bethel come on man they like <laughs> yes like everybody wants to play everybody yeah. everybody wants to play it doesn't matter you know what what the record what the record is what the what the score of previous games or like common opponent none of that matters like everybody wants to play everybody yeah. wants to play and it's a marquee game as yeah. it's been the last you know four or five years mm -hmm. uh, for Bethel and Kansas Wesley and a few years in a row it was the national game of the week um, <laughs> between Bethel and Kansas Wesley and I think that was the uh, 2020 and 2021 seasons um, and uh, last year who could forget last year uh, ended up playing on a Sunday of all things in a crazy environment in Salina but uh, this year uh, kind of looking at some of the individuals on the team for the Coyotes Richard Laura junior quarterback he has thrown for 229 yards and one touchdown Dayton Taylor has also thrown for one touchdown and 60 yards, but he's also rushed for quite a few touchdowns. He has three rushing touchdowns on the year. Nick Allsman back for another year mm -hmm. at running back for Kansas Wesleyan as he's rushed for 190 yards and two touchdowns. Tyler Boston, a senior running back for them, rushed for 200 yards and a touchdown. They kind of spread it out a little bit, kind of giving a lot of guys opportunities. Yeah. Um, here early on in the season. Uh, in the receiving core, Radarius Lomax Spivey has uh, 78 yards and a touchdown catch. Their only other touchdown catch is from their junior tight end, Ricardo Arias. And uh, two passing touchdowns compared to seven rushing touchdowns. Uh, you know, it, the, the run game's definitely uh, been popular for them. But uh, otherwise, what have you seen from their offense coming into this game? I mean, I think they've gotten like. Watching their film from 
you know, week week zero or one to to now, mm-hmm. they they definitely have gotten better and better. And uh, I think they found some things they like to do, especially in the run game. And uh, when when you when you feel like that, man, you have more time to you know to practice those things and uh, prepare for different looks that opponents may give you, and you know so you can feel more confident uh, running your things. And I think that that that's where that's where Kansas Westlane. It, it, it's that's either where they're at or definitely moving towards because they you know they they ran the ball really really well the last couple of games and uh you know they're they're looking good man but you know in this conference uh you got to be able to run the ball to to really be successful so them them figuring out things in their run game uh definitely gives them an opportunity to uh to compete with with anybody yeah, they definitely have had size on the interior, um, you know, a lot a lot in recent years, honestly, um, on the offense and defensive line. That, you know, they seem to have, you know, it, it, it's just a, an observation, but, you know, it's, there's times where you guys match up against them and they look maybe bigger in some, in some regards, you know, in size and things like that. But it, as we've proven um, in the past, at this level, it, it's not about the size, it's about execution, uh, no question question about it um, you have so many guys that are probably recruited labeled undersized that come into an NAIA program and perform wonderfully um, you know so it, it really you know some people on the you know, kind of the surface of things look at that and be like well where they're bigger than you they're going to take care of things you're going to block you all day and all night long but uh, th- yeah yes they I'll just say this they are very talented on the offensive line they do their jobs really well they do, they do, and I feel like you know our defensive line, though, um, at least you know definitely last week, man, they took a step in the right direction, and they they are playing. Uh, I I, I want to say, man, the, the best that they've played all year, at least last week. Uh, so I'm looking for them to continue that, and, and they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to this week. So they definitely sent a message. I mean, you guys, had, you had Doug Ryder playing like a monster. You know, guys like Colton McCarty, Mitch Monteith, and Jairo Castillo, uh, just to name some of those guys. But you know, I can't forget Ernest Ferrier, uh, Nobby, and Webb yep. as well. I mean, those guys come in and you know they play uh, pretty tough for you guys. Sometimes when the nose of the tackles, you know, they get caught blocked. You know, that frees up something for somebody else to make the play. So that's yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, nonetheless, you guys definitely have that pressure going for you coming into this game uh, against the Coyotes. Um, looking at other things on defense for Kansas Wesleyan, uh, Rico Moore, a senior, has 39 tackles, averaging 10 tackles per game for the Coyotes. Uh it's kind of weird how they've labeled this here in the stats and things like that. Uh, Guatama Masakoy with 28 tackles. Shaylin Lewis, 37 tackles. Julian Yuriosti with 26. Uh, Josh King Bradley with 24. And DeAndre Gomez with 23. They're, they're pretty active, Coach, uh, tackling. Uh, you know, you've got a few guys on here that are very active in the tackle for loss category. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they send them. They'll, they'll blitz you and definitely – Run, run to the football. They pursue really, really well. So, uh, like I said, it's just about us trying to. You know, when you're on, when you're on offense, man, you can't you can't sit back and wait. You got to be on the attack. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Got to be on the attack and and uh, you know getting to getting to our assignments and you know hoping hoping uh, you know we want to go fast as well. Hoping that'll slow down the pursuit a little bit. Yeah, certainly. I mean, their their defense has always been physical at Kansas Wesleyan. It's one of the reasons why they've been successful probably more than any other team in this conference against the flex bone offense, a mainly rushing offense. And, you know, they, they, they have the ability to stop the run. Um, you know, last year you guys had some unbelievable runs against them from Chance Curry and DJ Sears to get touchdowns against the Coyotes and not to mention some involvement in the passing game. Um, you know, DJ Sears found Bray and uh, Francis for the touchdown as well in the first half of that one. You guys had a pick six on defense against them. Uh, Brendan Sanders came in and stepped up big for you guys, really setting some solid tone for the team. I believe Logan DeMond made a field goal in that game as well in last year's contest. But, uh, yeah, yes, I'm talking about too, probably too much about last year, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was uh, I know I was spacing out. I'm sorry. There you right. go. <laughs> <laughs> Back to K Dub's defense. Uh you know, three different players with interceptions, so their defense with four interceptions on the year. 
Uh, you know, one of the things, and maybe this is more offense than defense, Coach, but uh, one of the things that they seem to do uh, year in and year out is they like to spread Bethel out and test your fourth and fifth DB against their fourth and fifth receiver. Um, you know, we, we, we've seen it, uh, you know, over the last three, four years where, you know, they're going to challenge you. You're going to say, okay, so y you got DBs. We'll see how good they are. You know, you know, things like that. Um, you guys have been, you know, very well challenged. And then at the last minute, oh, they're going to run the ball out of that scenario. So, yeah, yeah. It, it really just makes th things difficult at times. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if this is – I don't know if that's uh, – I don't know if that's their their makeup this year. Like watching the film, I just don't get a feel. I could be, you know, I could be wrong, and they could come and take, you know, twelve shots within the first sixteen plays. But mm -hmm. uh, I think I think they want to dominate the the trenches. I think they want to establish themselves as a run based team. Uh, I mean, you you read the stats, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really feel like. Uh, they feel like they they've got the tools and like you you named the running back Nick Osman he's a you know he's a great running back been there for a while actually recruited him to come to Bethel it did I didn't get him if you sure if you see this was the first time around yeah uh, Republic County kid went to D two and then came back so I know I know him really well he's a good he's a he's a really really good back and he's you know I think they they know their strengths and. Uh, They've got that big offensive line, good offensive line. They got solid backs. They've got quarterbacks who can run it, and uh, I think I think they want to run the ball and throw when throw when they have to, or throw when you do something crazy like put everybody in a box. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. No. No question. I mean, they've been pretty solid, um, and that's the thing. You 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 find out what your personnel is, what yeah. their strengths are, and you play to that and how that suited them. And yes, they've had really good passing quarterbacks in previous years uh, you guys did a great job last year against their starter of keeping him contained um, even when he tried to take off because he had incredible size to him and the ability to be comfortable in the pocket yeah. and things like that and you guys did a great job of respecting that but also doing what you needed to do to get done yeah. in that football game but no, uh, don't, don't get me wrong number nine he can throw it yeah he can throw it I, I just think that um I think that their identity that you know it's not it's nothing wrong it's not a knock and saying like oh they can't do this i think that they just will they want to uh you know establish the run because you know it is you know if you can you can run the ball man it doesn't matter weather doesn't play a factor as much mm -hmm. anymore you know what i mean like wind obviously that's part of the weather but uh so just that kind of stuff it doesn't really play a factor if you can dominate the trenches and run the ball and i just think that uh, it, it looks like, based on you know just four games here, it, it looks like they want to establish themselves as a run dominant uh, team. Well, let me let me ask you this, coach, and this can apply to either side of the football. Mm -hmm. Since that Ottawa game, you know, did you guys see anything that maybe against Avila they saw that they could do? potentially like Ottawa did in that game and you know try to run that against you guys this last week uh no we didn't not really uh, that's the thing about it I think we kind of talked talked a little bit about this man football coaches are some arrogant creatures man <laughs> you know what I mean like it'd be too much you'd have to give someone too much credit to watch a film and say oh that worked let me do that you know you gotta be a pretty <laughs> humble guy in order to do that sure. and I'm sure some people some people do it I mean I you know me i would i would definitely probably look and see uh what happened if i was in charge of running an offensive defense mm -hmm. good thing i'm not i let my coach you know sure. just do their thing but uh no not really man i think people uh, because here's the thing if you get into doing that and this is the problem this is why we don't see that as much uh because if you get into doing that and it goes against your identity and who you are uh mm -hmm. or your your uh, offensive or defensive philosophy and you're trying to do something and then that doesn't work man those are some long nights it's like you, mm -hmm. you'd rather you know you, you'd rather ride with the people you came with than to show up to the dance with a whole new crew you sure I mean it's kind of like that um, and, and feeling comfortable because week to week obviously you know like defensively you have to prepare for different schemes but you don't change your whole defense Right. That's why you have packages that you practice all year, mm -hmm. you know, and different things that you practice all year. You don't just change your whole defense uh, for the sake of a scheme 
uh, because then, you know, basically you, you only got three days, four days to really practice it. And how good are you going to be? You want these guys, as the season progresses, you want it to be like second nature on the calls and the checks and the things that they're making. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I think, you know, I think if you if, if you see a team that kind of does what, you know, already is doing something similar to what you have implemented, then you'll be, you know, it's more likely that mm – -hmm. Oh yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get this. Uh, like if if someone runs a four two five, you know, I just say that that's kind of our defense, and you know they're they're blitzing the strong safety to the boundary side a lot and having success with it. And then we're going up against another four two five team. Then it's probably like, oh, here comes the strong safety again. Trust me, he's coming this week. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. They but, have the understanding, right? The understand, but nobody's gonna if if you're a base three four defense, you ain't gonna switch to a, a four two five. Right, to, you know, to for the sake of oh, they had success in the four two five. Let's run the four two five. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, and, and certainly at you know at this level of the ball, you want to prepare for different schemes that you're yes. going to go up against. Yes. You know, any time of the year in any week. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, you don't want to be cut off guard at all. No. So um, I I just had to ask because I mean you know you have to think about it from an outsider's vantage point. You mm -hmm. know, you know that people could say oh you guys lost the game you know right. we're, we're going to analyze that and right. see what yeah. they did well and we're going to you know you could incorporate that yeah. to some degree uh, you i know so what you're basically telling me is you acknowledge that that could be a possibility yes absolutely but you know you're sticking to what you guys do so yeah kind of sort of kind of yeah, sort of that. sort kind of sort of that. there you go yeah it, it's it's too many gray areas there yeah. and, and there, there has been people who come out but uh i'm telling you i i've I haven't seen as a coach um, a team, at least against us. We just do we we do too much offensively. We do too much moving. You know mm -hmm. what I mean. And if you watch our film week to week, like you know, one game we may play with a true tight end most of the game. Next week he's an H back. We might go in straight doubles. We might like to run trips this week. So it it, it varies week to week based on mm -hmm. what we think they're gonna do. So if they're thinking like, oh, we're gonna play the same way. And yeah. they come in, and now they were they were preparing for doubles or or a pro set, and we're out in straight trips and open, and that then it's like, oh man, like we're we're in trouble. You know what I mean? So yeah, I just had to ask, like I said. So, but uh, should be a pretty good contest this week as oh, yeah. Kansas Wesleyan comes to town to take on the Bethel College Threshers again, six o'clock from Thresher Stadium. You can tune in on the KCAC Network. I'll have the call of that one. I'm doing that and I'm doing volleyball in the afternoon. Shout out to volleyball, man. They're on an eight-match winning streak. Yeah. That's so awesome. uh, they, they're playing pretty well. And, uh, you know, I, I mentioned on the broadcast, I mean, you know, they, they play a, a very tough second half of their conference season. Yes, they'll have some good teams that they'll play in the first half as well. But, man, yeah. they're going to run through the gauntlet yeah. kind of like you guys might yeah. in your division Man, so at, listen <laughs> our division is and that now the other division is you know it's it's, it's tough as well i mean look yeah at the, look at teams i mean ottawa st mary's coming on kansas wesleyan you know what i mean uh you you never know what you're gonna get you yeah know what i mean but i look at ours too and i'm like my goodness man i was looking at somebody's schedule and it was like it was like uh Southwestern, Evangel, Friends, Bethany, <laughs> McPherson. Yeah. You know what I mean? Beth Bethany. I'm like, oh, my goodness, man. Like, right. Like, wow, man. Like, whew. I tell you what, it's going to be exciting, though. So, I I'm excited, man. I'm real excited. You know what I'm really, really excited for? Uh, obviously, this week, you know, I'm excited to play the game. But I'm excited for the bye week, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming <laughs> before our, you know it. Get our minds right, man, and just – Woo side to get ready oh, yeah. for the second half of this season, man. So. Yeah, I think a lot of people are ready to r recoup. There uh, still have Kansas Wesleyan and Tabor on the schedule until yes. then, and then division play after the bye week. Yes. As the Threshers on October 14th will be Fall Fest, so the first game after mm -hmm. uh, the bye week will be Fall Fest at home against McPherson. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of the Bulldogs uh, and other conference games, uh, McPherson will host Avila this week. And other games, Friends is at home against Tabor, Southwestern at home against Sterling, Bethany at home against St. Mary, and Evangel hosting 
Ottawa this week. Uh, and then, of course, Bethel and Kansas Wesleyan, a marquee game in the KCAC, no question, this week. Coach, any final thoughts before we head into this one? Absolutely. Absolutely. Dan. Yes. That's definitely <laughs> it could be about football or not. <laughs> well, I mean, well, football-wise, I think uh, you said uh, McPherson, Avila. Yeah. I think that's an interesting matchup. Okay. I think that's an interesting matchup. Like, sure. I mean, obviously McPherson's playing really well right now. And, you know, they just came off that, that uh, big game against Ottawa. But I'm telling you, man, Avila, I think – Man, Avila's a sneaky team, man. That that quarterback is, he he he's really good. You know what I mean. So, uh, that that's the game that I'm really kind of eyeballing. Just kind of, really, I'm looking at these games. I'm trying to get a feel of the conference. I have not been able to. Oh yeah. I haven't been able to do it. But I think this game that'll give us a little bit. Not really, but <laughs> I, I, I'm saying that that's a game. That's a game to watch. You know what I mean for sure. Yeah. Well. But, uh, last thoughts too. You, you already know it. Uh, I definitely. <laughs> hey, I love God. I love my wife and my family, and I love Bethel College. You know what I'm saying? Bethel College football for sure. So, there you go. Absolutely. Well, for Coach A. B. Stokes, thanks for everybody tuning in this week. I'm Dan Page saying, roll on.